What's up, guys? Welcome back to the YouTube channel. We're over here. You see, we're at Uncle Mike's. The hot rod, the new Mustang, is on the table. It's on the table uh, getting set it up. You saw Randy. He brought in that. Uh, he had that freaking, mm, that in Soldier's Race Car 9-inch housing walking through the door with it. That was pretty cool. I said it wasn't heavy, but I lied. It's a little heavy. So we're over here at Uncle Mike's. Show you what we got going on over here. Uh, Courtney's over here. Uh, Randy's over here. Mike's over here. Brandon's over here. We got a lot of people over here looking at the car, man. They've made a lot of progress on it. They have done a lot of work. Uh, still a long ways to go, but you know it is what it is when you're building a car. Uh, so of course this is the the car that we got after I wrecked mine, uh, John Doc's old Glizzard. So uh, man, let me show you what all is done. If y'all want to support the channel, head on over to TurboJohnRacing.com, grab yourself some hats, and t-shirts. Don't forget if you want to get entered to win that wheel that we've all signed, go buy one of those turbo keychains. <laughs> Y'all go check it out. Appreciate it, guys. Man, y'all have been killing it over here, Mike. Work, man. This thing is looking phenomenal. This this is crazy. Uh, so you see, there's been a lot of changes. Uh, cut all the four bars out because he wasn't happy with the way it was uh, going together and what it was going to do. They got ten soldiers low prep brackets back here. They've got almost all of this done. There's a bunch of bars that's got to go on. Mike, what's your game plan on here on the inside? Yeah, what are you what are you thinking you're going to do on the inside here? Um, you got to look at the book, check out some measurements and stuff. But uh, basically, we're going to X out the driver's side, diagonal out the passenger side, X out the center of the car, put the gussets in it, uh, put the motor mount hoop in it. And you're getting rid of a lot of this stuff. Get, up here, uh, right? The whole front end's coming off of it. So no, that's gone. So like all that's coming out right there. Yeah. Everything. So all that's every bit of it. And you can see the way this that side over there is not quite got everything done. He was just telling us a minute ago there's a lot of that stuff was welded to the, the factory floor, the factory sheet metal. And that's the way a lot of people do it. Mm -hmm. But it's probably I mean we're building. I mean it's a tube chassis car. Well that's I mean, a good example of how it was, and right. that's Mike's work right there. This is what it's going to be. And y'all remember the last time we showed video over here too. I mean, there was a lot in here, but to make it do what we're trying to make it do, Mike was like, man, it's just going to be easier to cut it all out and go from like this. So the, basically the frame rail is down here and it goes all the way to the front and there'll be a bunch of bars here and there. And like you said, all this stuff is going to come out. It's going to be, this is going to be a legit full tube chassis car when we get done. The only, only thing we're going to leave is where the windshield bolts in. Right. Oh. What do you think about motor placement? Where, where are we going to put the motor? All right, guys. So the the <laughs> hey, I'm against it. I'm against it. <laughs> Mike, Mike thinks it's a little too far back. And so we're, we're still we still got time. We can think about it and talk about it. We got to get um, the weight of the big block. He's got a buddy. He's got a big block. And but if, man, if I had an aluminum big block, it would make me feel better. But I don't have an aluminum big block. It's a steel one. It's just money. It's just <laughs> that is the problem. It's just money. That doesn't work when I tell Kelly that. <laughs> if you ever plan on doing it, we can set it up with one. Right, well, that's, that's true. That's, that is true. And you said that the frame rails are going to be four inches off the ground. Should four be and a half inches on the four and a half inches off of the. I'm going to try to keep everything four and a half inch off the track surface. Gotcha. And that way, yeah, man, I think it's going to be awesome. And man. it's going to be full pan from front to rear. Right, so that that's good because you don't have to worry about the diapers. You don't have to worry about. I'll put I'll put bins in the engine pan and transmission pan, but the rest of the car is going to be sealed up. All right. So this is this is 75 inches, and what we're talking about 75 inches is from the mid plate to the rear end housing. So the you know the the, the shorter that distance is, the easier it is to pick up, right? Because think about weight on a board. If you got a thousand pounds, that is 90 inches out it's harder to pick up versus if it's 70 inches out, it picks up easier, it's leverage. And so that's what, you know, we're building this car to be a no prep car and it is gonna be a front side no prep predominantly, but we might dabble in the backside stuff too. So we talked about putting the turbo in the back, but man, that's a lot of unknowns for us. We got a lot of room though. We can come down the passenger side with everything. This is true. I mean, there'll be, there'll be plenty of room to go through there. We can, hey, we could put the turbo like right here beside me. We could put it Ooh, the boy, that, 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 that might be a little sketchy. Yeah, I mean, you could put a scatter shield on it, though, yeah. How, how would that be cool, the inlet coming out of the door over here? <laughs> <laughs> Look, Randy's over there going, y'all lost y'all's mind. My race car's got a big-ass hole in the passenger. Out the door, man. Right out this car. 
right out the door. The door, bring it out of the rear quarter in front of the rear wheel. Yeah, now that would be actually really cool. Yeah. Behind the wheel, look like the Monte Carlos, look like the old G bodies back in the day. That would counterbalance your weight too. It, yeah, it would. I, I thought about seriously putting it back here in the back. There is plenty of room, and then doing that single five inch exhaust out here out the back in the bottom, that would actually be pretty cool too. Right, that would be cool, man. I mean, it would be very cool to have that. But I mean, but then we got to think about. I mean, there's a lot of people doing rear mount stuff. But then we got to worry about okay, merging. Uh, do we take it down into a Y here at the motor, and then maybe have like a four inch pipe, and then three and a half, and then three? Or I mean, there's because try to keep the velocity up. I don't. That's we ain't never done it. I don't know if we want to experiment with it. There's enough room that we can put anything through the car. <laughs> right, that's that's true. <laughs> the passenger side is wasted space. No, that's true. That's a good point. We ain't put, we ain't putting no seat in. That's why he cut all the the jailhouse bars out of it. We ain't, this ain't gonna be a ride along car. So the windshield, of course, is going to be here. You know how pro mods are. I mean, pro mod, pro mods they cut big X's windows, um, boxes out of the windshield if it's set back so far. So we got to think about it and see. Uh, it would make it easy to set it right here because uh, this is the seventy five point seventy five inch point right here. So five inches forward, then you'll just, what would you do? Just go off the frame rail and just, I mean, cause you're going to still box it all in. I go, I go from the dash bar down. I wouldn't even put a U in there. I just go from the dash bar down and then put a cross bar in. And then put a cross, okay, I got you. So, I mean, it wouldn't be, I mean, five, five inches is right here. It would be here. The other thing we got to think about is if, I mean, all this is going to be gone. Um, I guess we'll have the skin. Yeah, okay, the top right here will be skin. And they had already cut this down like a lot of people do, I guess. What is it? Why is this a box here? This is not factory at all. No, they just cut They cut it out because usually it's boxed in. And that's the, where somebody, what, the windshield wipers are normally there? Yeah. But what, somebody build a box to replace they, this? They probably were running, a, they were going to run a turbo and put a liquid intercooler inside and run all the piping underneath that grill. grill yeah. Or if it came out and they just needed a place for a rear entry. Yeah, for the pipe or something. Oh, Courtney's getting ideas. We go back home and cut mine apart. Courtney's about to go cut the Courtney about to go cut the the cow out the cow out of the uh, the comment. So uh, so this is going to be pretty cool. So um, he's going to we are using the Jeff Thomas. We're going to use the Jeff Thomas struts. So we got those. Um, so those factory will location. factory location. You said uh, Brandon's going to cut you a plate or something, didn't you? Yeah, we're gonna water jet some uh, custom plates out. I have the good radius on it. Once we get match whatever the tube is gonna be, so it'll be nice, no funky shapes. Front of the motor should be right in line with those. Okay. Yeah, that's the, that's the game plan, and I, I think that's I think that's the ticket. And then, like you said, wherever we put it, we're gonna mount the turbo kind of close to the motor. We're not gonna put it all the way at the front grill. Uh, we'll let it suck air where it needs to. We ain't gonna we ain't gonna give it no ram air. Yeah, uh, we'll put it inside the car. If it's not in the back. <laughs> In the back of the car, would, it would be cool. Um, radiator, we are going to do a little small radiator. I'm probably going to get uh, one of those little teeny ones like Mike had, and I am going to probably put it in the back. Um, we'll put the little three gallon fuel cell up here in the front, uh, slide it back as far as we can. Um, you know, we could do a cable drive and put a fuel cell in the back. I mean, that would, I mean, that would, that what what is fuel cell? I mean, five, four or five gallons, four, 30 pounds. So moving it from there to there. Same thing with the radiator, I guess. Man, there's a there's a lot of stuff you could do. Yeah, you got all your stuff in the back. Fuel cell as high as it can be, practically touching the top of the deck lid. We'll see. Um, you got what dash? You got dash sixteen line. I know Alki Digger said that'll be fine. Um, we're gonna find out. Um, there's a lot of people that say that that won't work. I know it works on carburetor good, but we're gonna find out if it. Uh, we're gonna find out if it works on Courtney's car. We can go cable drill on mine now because we got rid of the header. Right. Oh, well, that's true. That's true. But we're gonna try not to. So all this is getting cut out, man. This is looking freaking crazy. This is a uh, race car, race car city. Makes me want to go cut some stuff. I, oh, I bet. I know, right. uh, but yeah, this is, man, I can't, can't thank y'all enough. This is working out. This is going to be crazy. Mike, what about the, um, the lower control arms? Uh, what are you? We're going to custom build them. So they're going to be custom built lower control arms. And y I don't know if y'all saw Courtney's video or not. Um, where they did a bunch of measuring and making everything to where, the wheels don't do this from front to back, and I've showed how mine works. We're not, we're not gonna, you hadn't, you hadn't, you hadn't aligned it yet. Aligned it, but I showed with the geometry how it just pretty much moves straight up and down. That man knows what he's doing right there. So that is amazing, because y'all, y'all remember the long travel shocks that we had with the, I mean, with the factory length control arms. I mean, we had a bad bump steer problem, and we had a what is that caster camber, whatever it is. Um, the freaking, when it was at full extension, the top of the tire was out and it was like riding on the outside. We're not going to have that problem. 
so that's going to be that'll be that'll be actually be huge in like scrubbing off et too you know that i mean because that is a not not the best thing but it is what it is when when it's going through there mike, mike said both of these cars will be perfect uh, man that's amazing so and this is this is all the like he's how he's calculating out what the arms and now nah, you do it old school man you draw it on the floor oh you draw, did you draw it on the floor draw it on the floor yeah. man that's how you do it oh my goodness oh well i guess that makes sense don't it that yeah. shows your radial sweeps length you can change everything with a pin screw there you go there okay well, I kind of understand, but not really. I don't. <laughs> <laughs> not a bit. <laughs> it's a, that's, that's above my pay it's grade. a little bit above my pay grade as well. Your frame rail, say your frame rail is 12 inches on a stock, or 12 or 13 inches on a stock. What you were doing with yours is when it would sweep, it would dive in. Oh, gotcha. So what I figure out is length, height, you know, and how, how much of a drop. So this is 21 inches. 21 and a half inches right there and you can see it starts at zero how did it barely move it ends at zero right so it goes through and the you can do the same thing with a four inch drop with a shorter control arm so we can go down here all the way to, to 14 the only thing it does is it changes your sweep just a little bit right so you're looking at about a quarter of an inch with a 14 inch arm oh, i think i gotcha. can get a 16 the way i'm gonna do yours is angle it back and put like a 16 inch arm four inches off of it right at the same at the same 90 degree angle from this right here so as it goes through is sweep uh yeah your lower control arm and your racking pinion lengths and heights that that has a lot to do with your bump steer where you don't have to add as much up and down to it um if you can get it to change rate at the same sweep right it's going to stay the same and that's like Courtney's. His has two uh, upper bar and a lower bar. Yeah. So one is longer and one is shorter. So it's even. So it's a double asshole. Right. I was going to say it's even more difficult to get it. Man, this is awesome. Guys, this is an update. I just wanted to give you all an update. We're bringing this rear end housing. Uh, 10 Soldiers Race Car knocked out that housing. Dude. Did y'all see they're doing a giveaway for a free housing too? Oh, yeah. Go buy a go, go buy a t-shirt and get entered to win. And I'm just saying, and that's a full one with axles, center section, everything. If you bought one and you won, will they just refund your money? I know, right? Can we get a refund? <laughs> but yeah. <laughs> but this is freaking amazing, dude. They have done a great job. Uh, Mike's killing this thing. They are, they are, I mean, it's crazy. I can't wait for the, the 10 soldiers low prep brackets. This is, this is going to be pretty cool, guys. All right, guys, comment, like, and subscribe. A little update on the car. Later.